Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the LIC Housing Finance Q3 FY22 Earnings Conference Call hosted by Access Capital Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Praveen Agarwal from Access Capital. Thank you and over to you. Uh, thank you, Stanford. Uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to this earnings call of LIC Housing Finance. Uh, we have with us Mr. Y. Vishwanath Gaur, MD and CEO, and Mr. Sivitto C, uh, CFO to take us through the results. Uh, in the initial round, we would request Mr. Vishwanath to give us an understanding of the quarter gone by, and then we'll open the floor for Q&A. Over to you, Mr. Vishwanath. Thank you. Thank you, Pravin Agarwal. Thank you. Very good morning to you all. Very, very good morning to you, all of you once again. And I also welcome to the post-earnings call of our LIC Housing Finance Limited. Uh, as you are aware, LIC HFL declared its uh, Q3 FI22 results yesterday. Before beginning, I wish you and your near and dear ones a very, very happy and healthy New Year because we are meeting first time in the current New Year. This quarter under review witnessed a third wave of COVID-19 due to the Omicron variant, which resulted in intermittent restrictions in some parts of the country. However, the situation got normalized and now with the expectation of the pandemic receding, it is expected that the business activities will strengthen further in the Q4. All key indicators have shown improvement during Q3 over the previous quarters. The financial highlights of the quarter are as follows. Total revenue from operations 5054 crore as against 4907 crore for the corresponding quarter of the previous year with a growth rate of 3%. Outstanding loan portfolio stood at 2,43,412 crore against 2,20,197 crore as on 31 December 2020, reflecting a growth of 11%. Out of which, individual home loan book reported a growth of 15% and now it comprises 80% of the total portfolio. It is up from 77 one year ago. Total disbursements for this quarter were 17,770 crore as against 16,857 crore in Q3 FI21 with a growth rate of 5%. Out of that, the disbursements in the individual home loan were 15,341 crore as against 14,511 for Q3 of FI21 with a growth rate of 6%. Also, we have achieved 135% of the pre-COVID levels in terms of Q3 disbursements when we compare it with Q3 FI 1920. On the net interest income front, NII was 1,455 crore for the quarter as against 1,281 crore in Q3 of FI 21, showing a growth of 14%. Net interest margins for the quarter stood at 2.42% as against 2.36 in Q3 of FI 21. Profit before tax for the quarter stood at 961.85 crore as against 969.64 crore. Profit after tax for the quarter stood at 767.33 crore as against 727.04 crore for the same period previous year, reflecting a growth of 6%. During the quarter under review, disbursements continued its strong momentum even on a sequential and year-on-year -year strong quarters with the individual home loan segment, the disbursement growth is clocking 34% for the nine-month period. The growth has been across all geographies, especially in the southeastern, southern and western, and also, and also supported by northern, central and eastern regions. The canvas of growth gives us a lot of confidence of an overall pickup in economic activities, as well as a strong and sustained rebound in the consumer sentiments. In terms of asset quality, the stage 3 exposure at default stood at 5.04% as against 5.14% as on 30th September 2021, reflecting a marginal sequential improvement in the same. Total provisions as on 31st December 2021 is 5,715.76 crores 
reflecting a provisioning cover of about 40% on phase 3. This includes 327.31 for COVID-19 related provisions. Assets recategorized as NPI as per RBI notification dated 12th November 2021 are about 2,497 crore and are placed in stage 1 and stage 2. ECL provision for the same is 230.83 crore. OTR during this quarter should at about 490.27 crore. It is much lower than the Q2 figure of about 2,141 crore. We have continued to focus on collection efficiency and the same has shown consistently and then it has shown very good consistency and it stands at 99% for all the regular accounts. The overall trend in the collections and recovery side has shown improvements which gives us a confidence of reduction in coming months. On the funding side, we have witnessed a reduction in overall cost of funds by 7 basis points during Q3 FI22 despite hardening in the bond yields during the same period and 24 basis points during the current finance year. Incremental cost of funds stood at 5.27% for the quarter. Net interest margin for the quarter stood at 2.42% as against 2.36 for the Q3 of FI 2021. For this quarter under review, the interest income increased by 2.55%, whereas the interest expenses declined by 1.37%, leading to margin expansion. Project RED under digitization transformation is progressing significantly with the launch of new projects like KYC and AML solutions, deposits applications, and audit portal. More than 1 million downloads of our HOMI app have been made so far and the company has approved more than 13,000 crore worth of loans received through this HOMI app. With this brief introduction, I would like to invite you for your queries. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may please press star then 1 on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star then 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Also as a reminder, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in this conference call, please limit your questions to 2 per participant. For any further questions, you may come back for a follow up. The first question is from the line of Rikin Shah from Credit Suisse. Um, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I have four questions. Uh, first one is on the margins. Uh, so the margin seems to have normalized this quarter. I wanted to check if there were any ridebacks or uh, interest income reversals in this quarter. And uh, also how does the incremental asset yield look like uh, versus uh, your overall uh, asset yield? And I have also noted that the incremental funding cost has started inching up. So any outlook on the margins, that's one. Uh, second one is on the uh, uh, asset quality. Uh, uh, the stage three coverage has declined by almost 350 bits to 40%. Is there a target level that you would like to intend to maintain? Uh, third one is on the growth. The LAP, LRD and developer loan books continue to contract. So uh, 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 from uh, here onwards, would you intend to accelerate the disbursements and any outlook from here? And lastly, the data keeping question, uh, just re want to request uh, GNPA by different segments and also outstanding book for restructured loans and ECLBS. Thank you. That's it. More questions? <laughs> seven, seven. Seven. Uh, okay. Actually, uh, as far as the questions are concerned, of course, me and our CFO both will answer in part, part and all. Sure. Uh, as you are asking about, see, the growth, of course, I will tell about the vertical business front if you are looking at. The growth, what we are seeing now in the individual portfolio is really is going on very well. And then, of course, I agree, developer book size, ours is not very much. It only own around 67%. There, what happened, a lot of scope is there for us to expand. In this quarter, we are having some positive outlook on the expansion further on this developer and, 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 and also LRD books also. And then as far as the, what do you call, asset quality is concerned, you are inquiring that uh, really now after this, uh, what do you call, uh, last quarter especially momentum was good in the sense people were not like in the earlier year of Q3, 
where movements were not that much and even this time what happened our teams also were in place to meet all the people and then recover the money and second what happened no most of our loans are actually in the retail segment mostly 80% of loans are in the retail segment in that also more than 70% are in the salaried class that's why what happened the regular income levels of people has helped us a lot that's why our collection efficiency hovering around 99% regular and then more than 70 80% in all cases so with these things what happened there was a very good recovery especially in the q3 that gave us a lot of comfort in what happened the provisioning levels also were maintained to meet all these requirements margin yeah good morning uh, regarding the other uh, query uh, pertaining to uh, margins yes there has been an improvement in margins year on year and if you look at sequentially also if you see the uh, loan asset growth has been around 11% whereas the nim growth has been around 13% 13.5% so that has translated to a higher net interest margin there is no one off here in fact uh, there was a reversal which was there in q2 uh, uh, which is not there now but this quarter margins are reflected of the true uh, in uh, income uh, from operations and cost of funds there are no one offs as far as the Sorry, go ahead, sir. Sorry. Uh, on the asset yields, uh, incremental no, asset no, yields. No, I'm coming. I am not finished. You have asked them five, six questions. No? I am just. I have noted down. I am just coming. Oh. Yeah. Asset yield. Uh, uh, there has been a decline in the asset yield in the initial part of the financial year, but now it is stabilizing. And from January, we have also increased our lending rates. So that should that should help. Uh, stabilizing the asset yields for incremental business incremental cost of fund has been increasing as you are aware that there has been an overall increase in the cost of funds and the i would say in the the bond yields across the entire uh, system uh, in fact in the gsec also there has been a very sharp increase but till now it has not uh, fully translated into the higher cost of funds if you look at the construct of our liability you will find that about 60 65% of our liabilities are fixed rate in nature so that certainly allows us some advantage in a increasing interest rate cycle regarding the stage 3 cover that was another question that you had uh, uh, placed <clears throat> if you now look at there has been substantial improvement in the coverage across including the stage 1 stage 2 and stage 3 also so stage 1 stage 2 increase uh, coverage has also increased and stage 3 coverage is also around 41 40 odd percent which at this point in time it is uh, quite improved as uh, compared to earlier position other queries regarding uh, the uh, growth uh, md sir has already uh, responded two more queries we had asked regarding some data points the uh, gnp the outstanding uh, what was the query it was the outstanding loan a restructured loan book and the ah, uh, okay. yes outstanding book restructuring this quarter is only 490 crores correct correct have i answered all your queries and so gnp by different segments GNPA, and out okay. gnp in the individual home loan segment is 2. 1% in the project loan it is 27% and in the non housing commercial it is 15.9% in non housing individual it is 9% total coming to 5.04% okay and sir on the eclgs outstanding book uh, what, what exactly you want ecl outstanding book so what is the total eclgs disbursements we have made until now about i think 1000 crores or so okay sir thank you very much that answers all my questions thank you the next question is from the line of kushan pare from hsbc securities please go ahead uh, thanks for uh, taking my question so uh, just uh, 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 happening again on the uh, nii growth basically uh, if you could just give us some uh, additional color in uh, in the sense that uh, uh, if you could let us know what the uh, reversal was in 2q 
as well as uh, is there any uh, any uh, improvement in yields that we are seeing in the individual housing uh, side in uh, 3q or any mixed change as have we uh, if you could uh, elaborate on if you've done more of affordable housing and at what yields does uh, affordable housing loans come in at so just wanted to better understand the uh, yield improvement uh, and nii improvement in uh, 3q so as i as i mentioned there has been reduction in the cost of fund also in the third quarter despite the fact that there has been overall increase in the uh, the in the uh, uh, bond yields in the system there has been improvement in the cost of funds that also has helped in improving the uh, the interest uh, coll interest income collection we have effected an increase in the lending rates also so that also should give some uh, support and some stability in in the asset yields going forward and as far as the uh, the uh, interest income reversal you are talking about that actually was in the q2 which had reduced the interest collection in the interest uh, the, the revenue from operations there is no reversal in q3 so uh, the what was the normal collection normal uh, quarter what was the amount of reversal in 2q it was around 350 crores you will get more reference on my q2 uh, call transcripts Oh, okay, so that uh, uh, okay, and there has been no change in individual housing yields for 3Q, right? And uh, uh, no in uh, change in mix as well in terms of within individual housing to affordable or uh, something like that. No, no, no. Affordable, affordable is different. Affordable is not for this year. Oh, okay, okay. So this is uh, this is entirely uh, coming out of the. Uh, right back of interest reversal that had happened in 2q and there are no uh, changes in yields uh, in 3q we have uh, uh, high rates in jan only right and is my understanding correct See, there is uh, again i think you are mixing it up there is no reversal in q3 no no i'm uh, 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 yeah so there was a reversal in 2q which is not there in 3q is what i'm correct, saying correct correct Correct. Okay. Okay. And no change in individual home loan yields for 3Q. No. Okay. Understood. Understood. And if you could just help me with uh, the out, uh, restructured book outstanding number for 3Q, we've done 419 crores in 3Q. Just wanted to know what the outstanding number is now. Slightly more than 7,000 crores put okay. together. Okay. Yeah. Correct. That's correct. Uh, that's all from my side. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhishek Abhijit Debrawal from Motilal Oswal. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, thanks for taking the question. Sir, uh, you opening remarks, I think you have uh, specified this. If you could just repeat this, uh, the, the amount of loans uh, we carry in stage one and stage two, but have been uh, recategorized as NP under the RBI circular. Yes, we have already specified it in the opening remarks. Yeah, we have disclosed uh, I, whatever we have taken into the book. Provision is also disclosed. Yes. Yes, sir. I wanted to know the amount of these loans. The provisions you have already disclosed in the presentation. What was yeah, the quantum yeah, we'll of loans? We just repeat it. It is 2,497 crores. Ah, roughly 2,500 crores we can keep. Ah. Yes, sir. The second question I had is, um, what has prompted uh, this change in provisioning policy uh, during the quarter, uh, what I'm trying to understand is, sir, until last quarter we had uh, something like a three bits kind of a provision cover on your stage one and stage two loans, and this quarter you have increased it to about I think 38 basis points. So what has prompted 36 basis points in, in Q3? So what has prompted the change in provisioning policy during the quarter? No, it is it is this RBI circular. If you see the RBI uh, notification of 12th November 2021, we have implemented, and pertaining to that, whatever will be the notional provision that is required, we have created that and we have kept it in stage one and stage two. Okay, okay. Is there such a significant increase in credit risk from just that RBI circular which has prompted this increase from three basis points to 30 crores. 230 crores. We have given the number also, 230 crores. Yeah, 230 crores is a provision made for the exclusive additional. Yeah, okay. 
And so lastly, uh, if you could just help us understand, have there been some, uh, let's say, resolutions or prepayments in the developer or builder book? Because, I mean, the runoff in that book during the quarter looks pronounced. So, yeah, there, have been some, there have been some closures. Some repayments have happened. And what was the quantum in that show? I think some six, seven hundred crores in totality. There have been some repayments. Right. So, and so lastly, you talked about increasing in uh, lending rates from January onwards. Uh, by how many basis points have increased your lending rates during January? It's about 10 basis points. 10 basis points. Thank you, sir. That's all for myself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Utsav Gogirwar from ICSA Prudential Life Insurance. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, just to uh, you know continue with the previous question. So as per the website, the interest rate is 6.7%. Uh, is this the latest one after increase of 10 basis point or uh, the new rate is, uh, new rack rate is 6.8%? No, no, it is the latest, latest whatever you are saying, yeah. 6.7% oh. is it? 6.7 is some category, but it is actually 675. Yeah, it is linked to the civil, lot of things are there, no, in ah. that quantum wise and all. Product categories are also different, yeah. Sure. And my second question is, if the rack rate for any, you know, particular kind of customer is, say, 6.7 or 6.75%, uh, are we allowed to lend below this rack rate? No. No. No, that is not permitted. That is not permitted. Okay, perfect. That's it from my side, sir. Thank you. Right. Thank, you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Umang Shah from Kotak Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just a couple of questions on provision. So, uh, 230 crores which we have uh, assigned to uh, uh, assigned to these uh, assets which have been reclassified uh, as NPLs as per our, uh, RBS circular. Will there? Do you really think uh, is there any need to increase provision cover on these loans or? Or 230 crores will be sufficient enough? Now, as far as this particular RBI uh, 12th November circular is concerned, we have already applied that and 230 crores is the number which has been provided for this. Okay, so, so the way to look at it is that 230 crores would be incremental. So the total provision against these assets would be higher. Is that the right way of understanding? Yes, certainly, certainly. Some provision will already have been done. Okay, okay, understood, understood. Uh, the second question was that um, um, uh, on our stage three provision cover, so now I understand that um, obviously last four to six quarters have been fairly uh, uncertain um, for the industry as, as a whole, but our stage three provision cover has also been fairly volatile. So under the ECL model, how should we look at a more steady state sort of a stage three provision cover for us? Yes, certainly, yes. Now, because as you have very rightly said, because in the last two years, there has been so much of uh, events uncertainty. and so much of uncertainty, so much of intervention by regulator requiring so much different types of treatment. Moderate. Now, you are now looking at a much, much more stable uh, provisioning, uh, I would say, uh, overview. So, so, uh, so the current 40% uh, PCR should be like a more uh, sort of a steady state uh, 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 provision cover uh, is that a fair understanding? Yes, yes. It yes, will. Yes. It will be at least forty. At least forty. Okay. Okay. Understood. Uh, uh, sir, uh, uh, the other question was that uh, have we made any appropriations to the impairment reserve during the nine month period uh, uh, in the current fiscal? Current year, uh, as as of uh, date, the total impairment reserve provisioning is two hundred and ninety seven mm. crores. Total, okay, which, total. Okay. Uh, which would be about 200 odd crores as on the previous uh, fiscal. Yeah, that kind. Yeah. Okay, okay. And uh, just the last question from my end, what proportion yeah. of our loans would be linked to any sort of a external benchmark, like a repo rate or something? You are talking of the lending side or the borrowing side? L lending side, lending side. Lending side, it is an internal uh, benchmark, in internal PLR benchmark. Now that PLR is also comprised of our internal cost of funds and other administrative cost. So you can say that uh, obviously if there is a uh, movement in the external rates of interest, it will also impact our PLR. Understood. Okay. All right. Perfect. Thank you so much and uh, wish you all the best for future quarters. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mung. Thank you.
The next question is from the line of Kunal Shah from Carnelian yeah. Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the opportunity. I had two questions. One was pertaining to the growth. So, uh, you know, in the current quarter, on a year-on-year -year basis in the individual housing loan segment, we had a good growth of uh, 15% and on quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, a good growth of 4%. But however, still we see in comparison to other players who are uh, uh, present in the housing market, their growth was much aggressive on both year-on-year -year basis and quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. I mean, if I have to name some large private banks, they had growth uh, of northwards of 20%, uh, right? So, and also now we have taken uh, a further uh, rise in the interest rates. So, just wanted to understand, uh, uh, is it the competitive intensity uh, that is hampering our growth or how should we look at growth uh, from year on for LIC housing finance? Yeah, yeah, sir, growth is concerned. Really, you have got a good question. I agree with you. What happened, you see, in the market now, it is very really competitive. Because all our, um, many players are there, even including banks and HFCs, all are playing in that. And of course, looking at the size of our company, what we call growth, if you look at from that parameters, I think it will be more clear. Last year also, what happened, Q3 was very heavy because of a lot of pent-up demand in the Q1, Q2 of last year. And then the Q3 also was very heavy. Nearly, we did nearly more than... 16, nearly 17,000 crores in that quarter itself. So over mm -hmm. that, we have seen the growth of nearly 5% is a good thing in the current year. And then if you look at the overall also, overall for the other three quarters put together, the growth is more than 30, 35% now. So Sorry. in the market, I agree there is a challenge, but now what happened, even though it increased rate of uh, interest, even few basis points, it is up only. In the market, actually, we are having what you call now demand across in all areas, in, actually, geographically, tie to tie three metro everywhere. What happened? The, our people are really on the field, and with that, our numbers of even channels are doing very well, and all regions are contributing this year. So, with that, we are very sure that I think the growth rates will be maintained or further may improve. Just to to add to what MD has just mentioned, 15% uh, growth on a two lakh crore portfolio also on the on the core home loans where the competition is the most intense. I think this 15% growth on this book, we are seeing after many, many quarters, and despite the, the so-called competition that you referred to. But even, sir, uh... Hello? Uh, we've lost the line for the current participant. We'll move to the next participant. We take the, line, we take the question on the line of Ashutosh K. Mishra from Ashika Stockbroking. Please go ahead. So, uh, my first question is towards the developer uh, loan segment. Uh, like, you know, we have seen good recovery in this quarter. And you know, in the initial comment, you also mentioned that you are again starting you know, growing this portfolio. So can you put uh, some light you know what is happening in this segment? We were the quite large player in the segment and you know, and uh, was positively contributing towards the names a few quarter, few quarter back. So how you really want to take this portfolio again, seeing that, no, the our experience? Uh, one thing, actually, I think yeah, our developer book size, you are aware that it was hovering around 6 to 7%. Uh, because what happened, of course, after COVID, there was a lot of what we call delay, and also somewhere the projects were not taking off very well, and activities were slowed down almost over there. Now, I think slightly there is a recovery. So we also, what we call now, have focused a lot on this one, and already... We've got a good number of proposals with us across some different towns, cities, and all. So going ahead, I think there will be good expansion even in these projects in the developer loan book also with us in the last quarter of current year. Uh, we also look for actually even other places, even other loans like commercial lab or even some LRDs and all, which can yield actually better uh, margins for us. So, so what is the current uh, no, incremental yield uh, on the developer and, and, and the, and the lab portfolio, if you can uh, just put forward, no, uh, compared to the, the home loan where we are seeing the competition, what incremental yield we are getting in these two other portfolios just mentioned? Uh, in, the, in the builder, builder loans? Developer loans. Yeah. Developer loans, around say 12%, 12 to 12, uh, maybe 13% max. <clears throat> and in the uh, loan against property, it will be ballpark around nine and a half to ten, ten and a half, depending upon the uh, rating. Okay. 
sir my, another question is uh, no uh, you just mentioned that uh, no we have seen the uh, sharp improvement in nims and, and no uh, the otr number uh, uh, what was the otr number in the last quarter and what is the otr number in this quarter so, uh, because i think this is a large uh, change in and that may have impacted the nims in the yes, quarter september you are asking for september yeah, and uh, september yeah, september, september the figure was 2141 crores correct correct 2141 crores in september quarter Okay. This quarter, that is uh, December quarter, is four nine zero. Okay. 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 And 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 that uh, interest reversal was ma uh, of three fifty crore was mainly toward that OTR, if I can assume. In the Q two. Yeah, in the Q two. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 And um, uh, on a cost of uh, fund side, how much increase do you anticipate? No, in the next six months, given um, uh, the way things are changing at this point of time. The cost of fund, there is a, uh, there is a very strong likelihood of uh, uh, Reserve Bank uh, action on reverse repo or repo. Uh, part of it has already been priced into the markets and uh, the bond deals, uh, but it has not affected too much on the longer end of the curve. It is the medium and the shorter end of the curve which has been impacted most. Uh, so if you and again if you look at uh, uh, the construct of our liabilities, where about 60% plus of the liabilities are fixed rate in nature, that yeah. will certainly help us to cushion some of the initial increases. Okay. 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 And, and, uh, and again, if you place it in perspective, the cost of fund has been, I mean, the, uh, the bond yields have been hardening since October. But in the Q3 also, we have been able to get about a seven basis points reduction in the cost of funds on a more than two lakh crore of liability portfolio. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. Uh, and sir, uh, last question is: any more uh, uh, no large recovery coming from the developer segment uh, in the fourth quarter or so? Uh, are, you, are you expecting any something like that there? Yeah, few are there in pipeline. We are all working out. Let us see how it goes because some are legal, some are even no. These things are there because developer books. Of course, there will be a very bigger size in volume each single case like that, but all put together, it will, it, it will be somewhat, actually, the volume will be a good size. Okay, something like what we have done in this quarter? No, it may be better than this quarter, also what we feel. Okay, 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 got it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nidesh Jain from Investec. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the possibility, sir. Uh, on the LCR, uh, was there any impact on our, uh, 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 our margins or profitability in this quarter uh, because of LCR norms? No, actually not. We had buffered up for, for the LCR in advance, so there was not too much of an impact there. And we have also disclosed it in the published numbers. You can see the LCR is more than 200%. And uh, we have been able to, uh, I mean, create adequate buffers. No problems on that count. We are fully compliant with that. Fully compliant, yeah. So, sure. and and so can you share case two number for both individual housing as well as uh, 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 individual non-housing portfolio? Case two, case two numbers for individual housing loan is uh, five thousand six six two crores. 5,600 crores. Okay, sure. 5,662 crores, no? Okay. And the total you already have, so you can just take it out. Okay, sure, sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sachin. Chavatin from Kotak Securities, please go ahead. Yeah, hi, uh, this is Nishchint here. Uh, my questions are answered, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, thank you. The next question is from the line of Kunal Shah from ICACA Securities, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, hi, congratulations uh, for a good set of numbers. Uh, so, uh, firstly, in terms of the corporate recovery, almost uh, 1,500 crores of uh, uh, repayments have been there this quarter. Any impact of that in terms of maybe the uh, recovery is very interest would have also come back and we would have booked uh, something out there which is reflecting in names or it is pure uh, 
yeah principal dairy payment no one off on the corporate side at all no no it is mostly interest uh, i mean it's just a principal closure principal repayment you can say okay so nothing in terms of either uh, uh, maybe interest or no, something no, which would have no, nothing no, of that sort nothing okay no. and okay and uh, corporate developer nps would have gone up by 130 odd crores or so um, during the quarter i think 27% suggest that uh, there is uh, there is actually the denominator has come down no loan book no no even even on the denominator uh, maybe compared to 24 odd percent uh, so 3650 goes up to 3800 crores so just want to check if there is any further uh, uh, slippage as well which has happened during the quarter because that seems to be 150 odd crores kind of an addition so the total uh, the uh, uh, stage 3 and the project loan is 3972 crores 3972 crores and yes. uh, and in september 21 how much was it it was around 3900 only okay okay so no increase as such no 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 uh okay uh, sure and uh, uh, so uh, lastly in terms of uh, the overall apart from uh, whatever was required under the rbi there is further inch up which is there in terms of the provisioning under stage 1 and stage 2 uh, put together is almost like now 830 odd crores uh, so uh, would there be like uh, further increase we will keep on creating the buffer under stage 1 and stage 2 going forward as well or we are more or less adequately covered now it is done whatever is required is everything yeah yeah yes yeah, yes, yeah. yes no because our books are mostly in the retail segment or retail segment what is happening now recoveries are good then it's collections a, are, are coming up so now the even covid impact all these things are slightly now fading out so i think that will give the more or less same stability for us sure sure okay yeah thank you thank you the next yeah. question is from the line of rikin shah from credit suisse please go ahead okay. uh, just a clarification sir uh, on the have there been a, uh, any restructured accounts that have come out of the restructured portfolio because uh, as of last quarter the outstanding book seemed to be around 7300 crores and in one of the earlier questions you mentioned it has uh, it's just slightly above 7000 crores now so that's one there has been no restructuring coming out uh, so but if there was additional restructuring of 49 so if uh, then if, if there is additional restructuring and no portfolio no account has come out uh, how would it be same sequentially no sequentially it is not same what i i'm not able to understand total put together will be around mm -hmm. 7500 that was the number i had taken 7100 plus 400 odd okay okay understood and uh, last quarter you, you had also given if you want the exact number 7471 uh, or 7000 something like that huh? okay okay uh, that is helpful and last quarter you had also given some split on the breakdown of this restructured between some segments possible to furnish it this quarter i think it is given in the disclosures to the notes to accounts there is a table which is appended below uh, okay we'll have a look sir thank you yeah, yeah that gives all things thank you the next question is from the line of param subramanian from macquarie please go ahead yeah hi thank you for the opportunity uh, i wanted to ask on the bt out uh, this quarter is there any uptake because uh, the pre payment uh, that you've mentioned in the presentation that has gone up um, half year versus nine months so that's my first question and secondly uh, on the loan book side how regularly as in how frequently does the loan book reprice since it's 99% floating so for example if uh, are be able to you know raise the repo rates by 25 bits uh, that the next meeting how how long before the the entire loan book on the loan side reprices yeah those were my two questions so this will be a quarterly review which will happen it will be a quarterly review which will happen on the loan book side so the entire uh, so for, uh, if if the if the benchmark gets raised by say 25 basis point the including the outstanding loan book everything will reprice uh, as in how long before the entire loan book reprices i will tell you quarterly depends upon when okay. the reserve bank is going to increase okay okay and my other question what on pre payment consequent what will be the consequent impact of that on the cost of fund that also is to be seen sometimes it might so happen that even without the repo or the uh, reverse repo uh, action there could be an increase which might require us to revise the 
review the PLR and revise it accordingly. Got it. Got it. And and my other question on the prepayment. So there is an uptake. Uh, prepayment, uh, prepayment more or less remains uh, stable on the on the individual side. In the in the non-individual project loan side, there has been slightly higher prepayments. No, so I'm looking at the presentation on the individual home loan slide. It's gone up prepayment nine month is ten point eight percent, and if I look at it half year, it used to be nine point nine. No, no, it is. Uh, it is going around ten percent. Around ten percent. Around ten percent. Just nine percent. That is uh, even earlier quarters also were there. Pre-COVID levels also more or less same. Yeah. It was 10.8 only, and on an annual basis, I think it was 10, 10 and a half. It, it was around 10 percent. On a full year basis, it will generally be between 10 to 11. Correct. On a full year basis. Got it. So there is no, nothing special in terms of beating out in this quarter. If you, see, if you see part of the first half, if you see two months, there was almost a stoppage of business activities. Right. Due to the second wave, due to the second wave, there was almost a stoppage of business activities in the first two months that is april and major part of may, may, may correct so that time the offices were also closed in fact there was no business activity people even people didn't uh, prepay or things like that so to that extent that particular six month uh, period might be skewed now if you look at a full year of last year that will give you a much much more stable and comparable base got it fair enough fair enough thanks for those answers uh, on the back thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of Vikram Subramaniam from Spark Capital. Please go ahead. Um, hi, sir. Congrats on the good set of numbers. Sir. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, and you had explained about the uh, you know uh, margin increase because of the reduction in the OTR run rate. Uh, but uh, uh, with the restructuring still happening, how do we see restructuring as well as uh, you know NPAs uh, trending going forward? Like in individual uh, home loans, last time we had uh, 2.25, and now it's 2.1. Uh, uh, do we see? Can we expect any sharp correction? You know, in the coming few quarters, both in the individual and any chunky uh, resolutions or recoveries in the builder book, is that possible? Any color on that? No, individual. Actually, what you said is correct. Now, what happened? Actually, recoveries are good, and with that, what happened in the individual book size? Even people who took earlier what you call either moratorium or OTR, now they are slowly coming out of that. We have got a special task force only for that, so that what happened now people can come out of that also. That is giving a good edge for us. So that's why slowly there is an improvement in that, as far as individual retail loans are concerned. In the developer book also what happened now, because slowly there is now momentum, then projects are taking off, then sales are happening across. So we see there will be some sort of reversal even in the developer book also. Those cases and OTR slightly can be better off in this quarter. The overall visibility okay. is much, much stronger today as compared to six months back. That is for sure. Okay. Okay. Got it, sir. And uh, uh, can you please share how much of, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 quantum of uh, loans that came out of OTR during the quarter? This is 490 crore uh, during the quarter OTR being made, but how much would have come off normalized? So nothing has now normalized because most of them are still within the OTR uh, framework of uh, the moratorium. It has not okay. come out. Okay. It will start okay. coming out. Maybe most of the most of the uh, people who had taken uh, the OTR had taken it between say one and a half to two years, maybe one to two years. And that period will start maybe about six months from now. Got it. One to two years. Six months to twelve months from now. Six months to twelve months from now. Got it. Got it. Uh, one final question. Uh, uh, now most of our uh, uh, loans are uh, uh, floating rate basis. Uh, as uh, you know, if um, uh, if and when the uh, benchmark rates start increasing, uh, when do we see first uh, set of uh, resetting? How often is the reset? See, it is difficult to give an exact date because obviously the uh, the uh, central bank is yet to come out with their policy announcements. But my guess is that uh, it will not be very long, maybe anywhere between, uh, say, maybe a couple of months, we can say. It is likely to happen across the industry. It, has, uh, it is not the first time it is happening. It has happened earlier also several times in the past. Two, three years back in the, uh, in the past also it has happened. So this is a regular phenomenon. And it will happen. Uh, 
uh, I meant in our portfolio, when does the recent uh, reset happen? Uh, rates every go up quarter, when do every you... quarter. Every quarter, the reset happens every quarter. It reflects for the customers every quarter, is it? Every quarter. Okay, got it, got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Piran Engineer from CLSA. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good afternoon. Uh, so my first question is basically uh, yeah, on, on Sarface. In the last one to two years, Sarface has been pretty slow. Just want to know how it uh, has it picked up now and how much of our resolutions in home loan and lap in the past two quarters have been due to Sarface. Due to Sarface? Sarface and all. Okay. No, surface reactions, of course, you are aware. Last year, what happened because of COVID, of course, that was there was some sort of no take in the sense activities were not that much enforceable, no, almost all. So, that what happened now in this quarter, slowly it has picked up. Now, it is coming to one actually almost all 70 80 percent of our earlier what you call pre COVID levels in surface activities. Also, I think going ahead, oh, once we restore the full, I think there will be good success like in the past. Okay, so typically what percentage of our uh, individual NPLs would we invoke surface in? Like out of 100 NPL accounts? Uh, individual, individual side, uh, individual in the side? In the individual side, yes. Yeah, yeah all, of course, depends you know, because now people can come for OTS, they can also come out of that, even they can repay, all, all these things are there involved. I think may not be very heavy. What I feel, I think pre COVID levels also we used to hardly. Uh, maybe around 15, 16 percent range would be there. Not much. Okay. The very uh, in the surface, especially in the retail customer segment, the issuance of a notice under th section 13 by 2 itself uh, brings forth action from the part of the borrower. So many times you may not actually even have to take it to the level of an auction. Okay, got it, got it. Sir, my next question is on yield. So I just want to understand this properly. We've increased it from Jan 1st. Firstly, is it increased only for the incremental disbursements post Jan 1st? Secondly, has competition also done it? And thirdly, uh, uh, just before Dashera, we had a, a, a sort of an interest, you know, festival uh, offer of 6.6%. .6%. So is it just that? And that was till 31st December. So is it just that that festival offer has gone and optically the yields look higher? Have we just no, withdrawn that? that? No, no, no. Before okay. the offer, the rates were different. The offer, the rate was for 6.66. And after the offer, we have, we have increased the, uh, the lending rates for the new loans from first uh, week of January. It is not a removal of an offer. Okay, but uh, the old book has also been There are other changes and... also internally in different segments, uh, in, in different Products. loan slabs also, product Products. categories also, there have been changes made. It is not a removal of an offer. Got it. But is it all, has the old book also been repriced by 10 bits? No, no. Offers? No, not yet. Okay, and are we seeing competition start to do that? See, we have taken an independent view depending upon our own perception of the market and our own growth uh, trajectory. We have taken an independent decision. It is possible that some uh, players might have taken or may not have taken. Okay, got it, got it. Uh, th that's all from my end. Thank you, sir, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhishek Khanna from Jeffries. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir. So this is Prakar. Uh, just a couple of questions. Uh, uh, first, just if I could uh, clarify that you know of this credit cost uh, or during the quarter of about 350 odd crores, uh, you know, is it possible to uh, help to break it up between uh, what is uh, any of the one time here? Because let's say if the 490 odd crores of restructuring done this quarter may have attracted a 10% provision. Uh, any of the uh, reclassification cost of 230 crores if it was done through the PNL this quarter. So, what is basically the business as usual part of the 355 crores and what is the one time part of the 355 crores? So, you can say that the 230 crores that has been uh, created because of the RBI provisioning requirement or the RBI circular, that is something which is for the first time 
it is obviously not done earlier this is the first time that the circular has also been implemented so apart from that everything will be normal even the restructuring wasn't done this time that 49 odd crores in case you have to make a 10 percent provision on 490 crores that has been done earlier also no restructuring provisioning related to restructuring had been done in previous quarters also no no i know but uh, so that 49 crores would be part of the 355 crores right is that fair to understand correct yes sir Understood. And uh, on the project loan repayments uh, that you mentioned, six hundred, seven hundred crores, fair to assume that they were all stage one type of loans, right? Because uh, you, uh, it's basically repayment of because the stage three within project loans has been declined and they practically paid just the principal, so they were probably good quality loans only. Mostly stage one, but could be stage two also. Okay, understood. Perfect. Uh, and last thing is, uh, you know, uh, just a little bit forward looking. You know, historically, uh, uh, fourth quarter for LIC tends to be a stronger quarter in terms of, you know, even NII recognition. Uh, partly because some of the overdue accounts, etc., you know, come and payback. Uh, would it be fair to assume that pattern is likely to continue, or would have would things have normalized? Now it is difficult to actually give you any number. If we are very honest, you are asking for a number, so I cannot give a number. It is forward looking, but yes, certainly we can say that margin stability will be there for sure. And uh, typically, fourth quarter is the best quarter in terms of business. It is the best quarter for recoveries as well. Perfect. Thank you, Sudhir sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Akhil Harzi from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, good afternoon. Am I audible? Yeah, audible. Good afternoon. Uh, so I just want to know what is the normalized credit cost for the company? The normalized credit cost in the last two years, I can just share with you. FY20 was 48 basis points. FY21 was uh, 60 basis points. And currently, if you see in the first part of the year, first half of the year, it was very high, more than 100 basis points. Q3 credit costs have come back to 60 basis points. Oh, and going ahead, uh, are you planning on keeping it below uh, the 1% then? Yeah, certainly, certainly. Oh, okay, okay, thank you. That's it from mine. Thank you. The next question is from the line of. Mayank Gulga from SUD Life, please go ahead. Yeah, hi sir. Uh, so hi. Uh, our uh, uh, loan book is uh, linked to. आपन जहाँ व्यक्ति सोबत बोलता है, क्या व्यक्ति ने आपला कॉल होल्ड वाइट खेला है? कृपया लाइन में. Hello, sorry, there are some disturbance. Yeah, please tell again, sir. Yeah. So uh, our loan book, uh, uh, which is floating, uh, uh, it's linked to BPLR. So whether it is uh, BPL is linked to uh, uh, marginal cost of fund or or average cost of fund. No, what it says uh, LHPL. No, that is LHPL is linked with uh, uh, the uh, uh, marginal cost of fund. Also has got a weightage. I will put it this way. It is not purely on the marginal cost of funds, but marginal cost of fund has got a replacement cost impact. Okay. So, so greater weightage is for marginal cost of fund or, or or average cost of fund? No, no, it is marginal. Okay, okay, understood. And thirty uh, percent of our borrowing is from banks and NSP. So, is it fair to assume that uh, this uh, portion of borrowing would be linked to repo rate? Some of them are with uh, external benchmark like T bill also. Group basic, na. Okay, but, but uh, uh, most of it would be like uh, either uh, T bill or repo rate. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we take the last question from the line of Kunal Shah from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thanks for taking the question again. Uh, so on uh, the restructuring. Uh, so uh, you said there are no reversals, but uh, I assume we are not accruing interest on the restructuring the way we have uh, reversed it in the previous two quarters. 500 crores interest would also have got uh, reversed in this quarter as well, maybe no, for no, the entire. No, no, it is not there. It is not there. It is not there. What is happening? Q2 itself is done and finished. 
Okay, okay. So incremental restructuring which was there, that is, uh, uh, there is no reversals which have no happened further, in this one. There is no further restructuring, uh, pro I mean, uh, circular or instruction from Government of India, it has stopped, you know that. From yeah, RBI. No, 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 the pending which was there, okay, which yeah, would have got implemented. Even, yeah. even that, even that uh, in implementation period is over. Yeah, okay. Okay, and uh, uh, lastly, in terms of the outstanding restructured pool, uh, so 5,000 is corporate and balance is individual, but within individual, can you see, uh, can you give how much would be home loans and how much would be left? I don't have the full details right now. I can uh, just... But majority will be in the what do you call now, as far as restructuring is concerned. Um, because our loan book, if you see, 80% is individual only into that, no? Uh, yeah, yeah. No, if there is any difference in terms of maybe uh, left uh, uh, or maybe individual non home loans are there, so just wanted to get that sense. Yeah. No, no, no result. No, no, no. Okay, okay, I'll take it from you separately. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Kunal. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That was the last question. I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Yeah, here I thank every one of you for giving this uh, opportunity once again. Uh, friends, actually, we look forward for a what you call very, very positive and then very strong Q4. And the company is fully geared up. What you call all my team members across the country are fully working in, in tandem with all our goals. All the recovery people are also putting their best. So going forward, we look forward for a very good double-digit growth as far as things are concerned, then at least. Then again, recovery also will be very strong enough to bring down the what you call our NPL levels for for than the expected levels. With all these things, the company will be in a position to close the financial year on a very sound footing. And uh, on behalf of the entire team here, I also thank you for giving this chance to meet every one of you. Thank you, wish you all the best. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Access Capital Limited, that concludes this conference. We thank you all for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. <laughs>